fabulous fourth grade parents, and welcome to Parent Quick Smart, Episode 1, Understanding Place Value for Unit 1. When learning place value, students will learn to read, write, and model numbers through 1 million. Now the basis of our base 10 system is that as we move to the left, the value of the digit increases, and it's 10 times the value of the digit to the right. For example, we know that 110 is equal to 10 ones, or 100 is equal to 10 tenths. So let's look at our number and see if we can figure some of this out. In our number 262,400, we have four hundreds. That's equal to 40 tens, or 400 ones. We also have 200 thousands and six ten thousands. We could also say that as 26 ten thousands. Students have to be able to write the numbers in different forms. Standard form, just the digits. Word form, which is how you say the number. And expanded form, which is the place value values. Students will now need to take this newfound knowledge of place value and compare and order numbers. One strategy for comparing and ordering numbers is to use a number line. Let's look at these three numbers. I know that all three of these numbers are in the 100 thousands, so my number line is only going to contain 100 thousands. And I know that they're pretty close together, so I can actually count by 10 thousands. Now I can take my knowledge of place value and place these numbers on the number line. I know 123,000 will go in between 120 and 130,000. And the other two numbers fall into the number line as shown. Now, looking at this number line, I can see that the least number out of my three is 108,999, and the greatest number is 135,635. Now, students will be required to write these in order from least to greatest, greatest to least, or in inequality statements such as 108,999 is less than 123,423, or 123,423 is greater than 108,999. Students can also line the numbers up to compare and order them, and start by looking at the digit all the way to the left in the greatest place value. In this case, our 100,000s are all the same. So we want to move to the 10,000s. Then we could order, compare and order our numbers. Now, one common misconception that students might have is they might line everything up to the left, but we want to make sure to look at that, what that place value represents. In this case, this student would probably think that 53,627 is the greater number, but they're incorrect because that five is in the 10,000s place. So that number needs to be shifted over. 200,000 is more than 50,000. Now students are going to take their knowledge of place value and apply it when estimating and rounding. Rounding is a form of estimation where you can come up with multiple estimates for one number. Let's look at how we would round the number 464,782. The first way we're going to round is to the nearest 10,000th or to the 10,000th place. Now when we do this, we need to look at the number and see that there are 46 10,000ths. So I know my estimate is either going to be 460,000 or 470,000. Now I need to come up with a place a midpoint so I can figure out where this number falls. That's going to be 465,000. I know that 464,000 is less than that, so I know that my number is closest to 460,000. So this number rounded to the nearest 10,000 would be 460,000. Now let's round to the nearest thousand. I know that I have 464,000, so that my two estimates are either going to be 464,000 or 465,000. My midpoint between those two numbers is 464,500. So, since 464,782 is more than the midpoint, my answer, or my estimate, is going to be 465,000. Now, you might remember the rule of look to the place to the right. 
If it's five or higher, round up. If it's five, four or lower, round down. Now that's something that eventually we want students to come up with, but we want them to see why that works. It works because in our base 10 number system, five is always our midpoint. So when rounding, it's easy to start out on a number line so students can see that we're really picking what's which number is closest. Now we're gonna take that knowledge of estimation and move right into adding and subtracting. Now we want our students to estimate before they add and subtract so that way, once they add and subtract, they can have a reasonable number to compare it to, to see if they're in the right ballpark. Now let's go ahead and do some addition. When adding and subtracting, we're always going to start within the ones place value. So we would add four ones plus one one equals five ones. Now let's move into the tens. Seven tens plus five tens equals twelve tens. Now, I know from my place value knowledge that 12 tens is really 102 tens. So I'm going to regroup that 100 into the hundreds column, and I'm going to record my 2 in the tens column. Now I'm going to add 100 plus 300 plus 0 hundreds, and that equals 4 hundreds. I'm going to do the same process in the thousands, the ten thousands, and the hundred thousands column. Now my final sum is 656,425. Let's check that against our estimate. Our estimate was 666,000, so we know that we're in the correct ballpark. Let's do some subtraction. Now, remember we want to estimate first, so we're going to estimate 16,421 minus 14,831. We're going to say that's going to be about 1,000. Let's do some subtraction. Again, we're going to start in the ones column. One one minus one one is zero one. Let's move to the tens. Two tens minus three tens. Well, we know that we can't take three tens away from two tens, so we're going to need to regroup and use that knowledge of place value. I have four hundreds, so I can take one hundred and break it in to tens. So now I have 10 tens and the two tens that were there to make 12 tens. 12 tens minus 3 tens is 9 tens. Let's go ahead and move to the hundreds. We had 3 hundreds minus 8 hundreds, so we need to go ahead and regroup again. I'm going to take 1,000 and bring it in. So now I have 13 hundreds instead of those 3 hundreds that I had before. 13 hundreds minus 8 hundreds is 5 hundreds. Five thousands minus four thousands is one thousand. So our difference is one thousand five hundred ninety, which is pretty close to one thousand. So we know that we're reasonable. Another way to check our answer would be to add one thousand five hundred ninety plus fourteen thousand eight hundred thirty one, and our sum should be sixteen thousand four hundred twenty one. Here are some questions that you can ask your children to help them understand. Some real world, world connections would be to apply it to money. If I had one hundred dollar bill, how many ten dollar bills would I need? Thanks for watching. Check out the following websites for some helpful hints. And remember, always keep in communication with your child's teacher. See you next time.